Hi, I'm Asa, an engineer at NI, and today we're going to assemble, wire, and develop a simple application using NI Remote I.O. Let's get started. For our application, I have four parts out of our NI Remote I.O. group. I have an EtherCAT bus coupler, a digital output module, a digital input module, and a thermocouple input module. Now, when you purchase one of these products, you'll always get two components in the box. You'll get a module and a bus connector. And we're going to start with the bus connector. To assemble, you're going to use a DIN rail. And you basically just snap these connectors right on the DIN rail, like this. Now, they only go together one way. And you can see they have some nice markings that tell you which way to connect them all together. They are not particularly specialized. There are wider ones for bigger modules and narrow ones for the smaller ones. There is a special one for the bus connector, since it's always the first module in the chain. Now, I want to pause here and talk briefly about this digital backplane that we've basically built on the DIN rail. It's a fully shielded backplane. And what that means is that it's much more noise immune. So that lets us run the digital backend at a higher rate. All the modules update faster. Uh, the signal path for analog is quieter, so you get a better analog measurement. And it happens to be particularly robust in terms of shock and vibration. OK. Since we've got our backplane built, we can go ahead and just snap the modules on. They all just snap in. No tools required. And at this point, we're assembled. We can go ahead and start doing our wiring. So first thing we want to do to wire is take a power supply and wire it into the bus coupler. And so we'll do that here. And once we've powered the bus coupler, that actually powers that digital backplane as well, but it doesn't power the modules. Each of the modules need their own power. And the power comes in through these little black connectors on the side. Now, you can power your own isolated supply if you want, or you can daisy chain the power across, because each of these connectors has a convenient bus bar. And so I'm just going to daisy chain these guys right across the top, just like this. All right, other thing I want to call out, you'll notice that I'm using um, stranded wire with ferrules on it. Um, and I'm not using any tools to attach this. This has uh, something called push-in technology. So I can just take the conductors and push them right into the connector. To take it off, you do need a screwdriver but you just press the little connector above the conductor as it pushes in. Now also for our application, I'm going to go ahead and jumper the digital output zero to digital input zero. All right, so now we have everything wired up except for our sensor. And this is a solid core sensor, so I don't need any ferrules. I can just plug this in to our thermocouple input module. All right. Last step is to connect this to the controller. Um, for that, we need an Ethernet cable. We're just going to connect this to the second Ethernet port on a Compact Rio 9064 and the first Ethernet port on the remote I.O. product. Now, quick note about the controllers. You can use any NI real-time controller with two Ethernet ports that supports the NI Industrial Communications for EtherCAT driver, version 16.0 or later. At this point, we can power everything on. Notice that when it's powered on, you've got all the different LEDs lighting up. This gives you the status of the power supplies, the channels, and the sensor supply if it's integrated on the individual connectors. All right, let's go ahead and move on to software development. Now, as a note, I'm starting with a Compact Rio that has already been configured. It has the right software installed, and it's been detected on the network. If you'd like to learn how to do that, please view the Compact Rio out-of-the-box video. And that same video will apply to pretty much any real-time controller from National Instruments. So I'm starting with just a blank project. You right-click the project, choose New, Targets and Devices, and then go down to in this case, real-time Compact Rio, and it'll detect the attached controllers. Once you have your controller, select Scan Engine, and it'll automatically detect the controller and interrogate the EtherCAT bus and connect and discover all of the NI Remote I.O. products attached to the controller. You can see all the different uh, 
modules attached, as well as the I.O. points available under each of the modules. In this case, we have our three modules. At this point, we can start developing the application. You just need to right-click on the controller and choose New VI to develop your real-time application. Now, for the purposes of our demonstration, I've already developed some of the application, so I'm going to add a pre-built application. So our application is going to be a simple thermostat. It's going to read a temperature from the thermocouple, and if it is below the set point, it will turn on a heater through the digital output, and we'll read that back with the digital input to confirm that it's working. Here's a look at the block diagram, and I'll walk you through a few things that are important. To start with, we have to configure the scan engine, which is what we use to actually read the remote I.O. I.O. points. Then we have to open a connection to the remote I.O. chassis or control system, and then we will configure the individual modules. Now, in this case, two of the modules are configured. We're going to configure one more. Remote I.O. installs a special palette of VIs under Industrial Communications, EtherCAT, Remote I.O. And here I'm going to get the Configure Module VI. This VI is polymorphic, so we can just select the module that we want to configure. In this case, it's the REM11152 digital input. I'm going to wire my error cluster across into each of these modules or each of these VIs, and the slave address. And I also need to tell it which position in the remote I.O. bus that this module uh, resides in. In this case, it's the second module. Put that there. I'm going to create another constant for the one configuration item that we have for this digital input, and that's a filter time. This will allow you to debounce your digital inputs or otherwise filter out noise. We're going to use the uh, fastest setting, less than 100 microseconds. OK, once you've configured the modules, you set your scan engine to run, and then you read your I.O. inside of a timed loop that is synchronized to the scan engine. Inside this loop, we're going to drop our I.O. variables from the project. First one we want to add is the thermocouple. So I'm going to take our TC0 channel and just drag it over, and then wire over the error clusters and then take the output and wire it to our scaling VI. We need the scaling VI because the output from the analog measurements on remote I.O. are just raw integers. And this VI conveniently will scale it to a double, which is more common in LabVIEW for analog measurements. All you have to do is provide a little bit of configuration information. Next, we're going to bring in our digital input, which is the other item that we've left out of this application. So we choose DI0. Drag it over, drop it down, wire our air cluster. Fix the alignment, and wire it to an indicator on our front panel. And that is a complete application. The last thing you do is basically just turn off your connection to the remote I.O. product using this closed connection VI. Let's run it and see it work. It automatically deploys. And what you can see is the current temperature of the thermocouple and our set point, which is currently around 28 degrees Celsius. Because set point's above the temperature, our heater is on. But if I just hold the thermocouple and get it above 28 degrees, our heater should automatically turn off. There we go. Of course, if I let go, it'll come back down. I also want to call your attention to the LEDs on the front of the uh, product that automatically show you the state of the channels. So whenever the channels go on, the LEDs go on and they turn off whenever it's above the set point. Okay, so today we've uh, shown you how to assemble a remote I.O. system, uh, how to wire it up, and then how to develop a very simple application. Thank you for your time.